everybody, welcome to Wingman's Hangar, episode 58. This is an inside look at everything Star Citizen, Chris Roberts' new epic space adventure. We take you around the verse with all the teams that are making Star Citizen possible. Let's get to it. Come up today, we got the Oculus Rift. Where? In your hangar. Fufa Horn feedback with your questions. A roundtable interview with the devs who are bringing you the Oculus Rift in the hangar. And we've got David Haddock in from LA to talk about Squadron 42. Mmm, should be fun. Let's get to it. What happened this week at CIG? Lots of new hires. In Austin, we have Calix, oh, oh, Jason Cobb in Austin. We have Calix Renu and William Lewis in LA. And in Manchester, Luke Presley. We're still hiring, so get your stuff in. It's Cloud Imperium Games, HR at CIG.com. Let me know, we need more folks. Ooh, what else is going on this week? Dog fighting. We got the servers worked out. We're now testing internally across multiple studios. Dog fighting. I'm looking at you, Maverick. Watch out for Dakota. Coming at you. The Vandal Scythe is near completion and it's ready to kick some dog fighting butt. And of course, RSI comments are revamped and we're restoring all the old comments. If you remember the way it used to work on the, uh, the com links is the forum wasn't associated with them. So right now you put a, a link or a comment about the, the com link, comment about the com link. There's some alliteration action for you. But essentially it will now be attached to that com link rather than in the forum. So it's gonna clean that up a bit, something you guys asked for. And of course, Next Great Starship, episode 1.4 aired last Friday. Really cool, and the wild card winners were announced and saved, and you got a look at the new Mustang. Very, very cool episode. Sandy does an amazing job with that, I think. If you haven't checked any of these out, you need to get on the, on the, on the stick, start looking at them. There's some really fun stuff happening there coming up. And of course, it wouldn't be a hanger without some fan gifts from Nikki and Ska. Hey, everybody. We got a fan gift, and you know what that means. Ooh, it says Wingman. Let's see what it is. It says, thanks to Chris Roberts and the team, which is all over the place, uh, from Nikki and Ska. Well, what did you guys send us? But, you know, I already like the look of this already. Mark, what do you think? Mm. It's looking good, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it's Friday, too. Oh. High West Whiskey <laughs> and Single Barrel Forum. Daddy like. Oh. Woo! What do we say, everybody? Woo! Hey. Hey. Thank you, Nikki and Ska. It is always very, very nice. The gifts are very much appreciated, especially those of the persuasion of the boozish area. So listen, today, what's going on? We've got a hanger patch coming out right after this show. The, a hanger patch is pretty important today. We promised Oculus Rift support. Today, we release it. You're going to be able to tool around in your hangar. If you have the Oculus Rift, you'll be able to check it out, walk around, see what's going on. It's not completed yet. It is like the first pass at that. There's a lot left to do. We don't have an interface which shows you which way you're facing, so you might be looking this way while you walk. But, you know, that's okay. First pass, we want your feedback. That's exactly what we need out of it. And earlier this week, I sat down with Jason Spangler, Kevin Saffel, and Tom Davies to talk about what it's like to play the Oculus in the hangar today. All right, we talked a little bit about the Oculus Rift, and I'm here at the Oculus Rift Summit slash Roundtable with Jason Spangler, our CTO, Kevin Saffel, lead programmer, Tom Davies, gameplay programmer, and we are now going to be implementing the first iteration of the first blush at the Oculus Rift. Now, Tom, you've been working on it a lot these last couple of weeks, so what are the fans, what can they expect? Uh, well, it's very exciting. I'm excited to get it out there because it's it's really cool. It's uh, definitely an early version of Rift support. It's going to be a pretty ongoing process, I think, to get mm -hmm. it going. But um, right now, you can walk around the hangar, you can look at the ships, uh, and it it all works, you know, pretty well. You can you can check out, uh, um, you can sit in the seat, sit in the pilot seats, check check everything out. Um, but you know, there's definitely definitely some issues with it that we want to iron out. Right, right. First. First blush. So, and this, Kevin, you're, you've taken over the build process here, and so mm -hmm. this is kind of our first. This is actually going to be your first build. Yeah. Right. So it's coming out today. If you haven't gotten your build for the, uh, the hanger or your patch rather for the hanger, it should be out right after you know this airs. So, what uh, what what can they expect? Well, uh, we're going you know we're updating the uh, patcher and the launcher. Uh, I'm taking sure. over all those processes. So. This this will be a good first test for you know some changes that are coming down the pipe uh, in the launcher, 
um, and uh, be my first patch to put out to the wild too. So that'll be uh, to the wild. <laughs> to the wild is a good it's a good way of calling it exactly. So Jason, um, this is the first uh, Oculus Rift support. We promised it at the twelve million dollar stretch goal, right? Um, but there are still some issues. We're not. This is not finished. Yeah. Um, some of the uh, issues are. The engine seems to have some higher latency, like some of the demos you're used to. Uh, we've measured like maybe at 16 milliseconds stuff, and this is like 40 millisecond. But Tom measured that after he implemented support for the Oculus latency tester. Mm -hmm. um, some others are we're only using the post-processing stereo effect and not the true stereo rendering. So there's some you can see some stereo separation visible sometimes. Um, we have some like tracking and movement issues too, but they're all things we plan to solve in the future. Right, but we've gotten to a point now where we think it's good enough for people to get in there, play with, and we want their feedback. We, we talked earlier, um, uh, out before we came in here, about how like right now you can actually be walking this way and you know your head looking that way, so that we don't have an interface that shows you how to align that, right? So. Right. Right, yeah, and with a, a lot of other games that isn't such an issue because you have some kind of point of reference on the screen, like a gun or something. Uh, so you kind of always know which way your body is facing. Mm -hmm. um, or, or games, uh, in some cases, will uh, have some kind of head steering, so you'll actually walk which way you're looking rather, rather than your head being detached from your body. Uh, so that's another thing we can look into as well. I mean, um, Oculus is such a early technology right now everybody's kind of figuring all this stuff out so sure it's very cool to get it out there and see you know the feedback there is. it's funny but in 1992 chris had kind of created an early version of this from strike commander where you could look around the cockpit you could see your hands move and stuff like that and so one of the things that he was very excited about with oculus rift when they came up was you know he could see his vision you know realized in star citizen so we've been working very closely with these guys for for you know since they started and since we've started and um, they've been very good to us. We've gotten really good support. And so, what are the differences between the the original dev kit and the high res one? Other than not making me ill. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've beefed up the uh, the hardware on that, and uh, it's higher definition, of course. So it's a little bit cleaner. You don't have as much uh, swimmy. You got a swimmy stuff as the original one. Um, what else am I missing on that? No, yeah, I think that's that's about it. I mean, one thing in particular about our game is everything, all the textures, the models, everything is so high definition. Mm -hmm. When you're looking on such a low resolution screen as the uh, original uh, dev kit, there's a lot of pixel flickering and blinking sure. just because mm -hmm. of all, all that aliasing. So it definitely looks a lot better on the on the high res one. My term sounded more technical, swimmy. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we got a chance. Some of the fans got to try it out on. Uh, Last week was we had some fan visits and what did they think, Jason? Did you get a t they get to see it? What did they think? Dude, I seemed like they loved it. They were really excited and thought it was really cool. And it's kind of uh, they were testing it out. We've been testing it around the office. I like it too. I can't wait to actually test it in dogfighting. That's going to be kind of fun, and then we'll really be able to tell whether we can, you know, whether it's going to make you, you know, my son, the winglet, is really looking forward to it. But, <laughs> but you know, some of the sometimes the old dads are not. Um, it's really cool too because you know you're talking back in '92. Uh, <clears throat> when I was in college, we were doing some of the original VR stuff uh, through some companies that were trying to set up all the, oh, VR is the next big mm -hmm, thing, mm -hmm. and it just didn't happen, and now it's actually happening, and it's, it's really cool to be working on it. Yeah, and we've done it, we've, we dedicate a little extra time to making sure that happens, because we promised people that we're going to do it. Even if it takes a little longer, mm -hmm. we're going to get it done, because we have to, we are working with a cry, cry engine team to make sure that it works, and so, you know, sometimes we're, we're waiting on them to update, sometimes, sometimes we rewrite stuff ourselves it's it's an interesting process and so we believe in making sure that we do meet those requirements even if you know maybe it takes a little bit of time sometimes <laughs> to get it right but I mean we've been playing with it for a while right Jason mm -hmm. a little bit in the, in the hangar and so why are we doing it now what's the deal now we just feel it's time yeah uh, it was time we had the uh, time available on the engineering side to really fix these last few issues that we thought we really needed to before releasing the uh, we have our high def uh, dev kit prototype so that we can see it in higher resolution um, and just it's the time it is the time <laughs> and the cool thing about this whole thing is that both our companies are crowdfunding successes and we are big on finally letting the voices of the community or the world be heard on what they want clearly they want the oculus rift 
clearly they want Star Citizen, and clearly they want the Oculus Rift and Star Citizen, and that's <laughs> happening now. So go get your patch today. You'll enjoy it. I think uh, if you've got an Oculus Rift, great. If you don't, find somebody who does. It's always good to see how those things are done with the Oculus Rift and the, and the team that's behind them. And now, of course, it's time for... Feedback! Hey guys, how are you? Good. Dave, Thanks. good to see you. Rob, how you doing? You guys ready for a little forum feedback? Sure, sure. A little tag team action today? Cool, cool, cool. Let's get right to it. <laughs> From Infidus, those spider miners we saw last week were amazing, but got me to thinking. How would we manage to transport such a contraption without a ship as big or as larger than an Idris? Hmm. Good question. I don't know. How, how, big, I mean, they're, how they're, big are they? They're really big. They are really big. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the scale of the on that demo of the guy running across the platform, I mean, it's like a, a hornet is very small compared to one of those things. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I saw one. They had one on a test level in the dogfighting test, and... So I flew up right next to it and was just sort of like staring up in awe. It's amazing, yeah. <laughs> so probably not, right, Rob? Not, not not on the small ships, no. You're going to need a bigger ship. I mean, I well, don't know how big. Well, unless you the shrink ray. <laughs> what? <laughs> there is no shrink ray. <laughs> totally, totally kidding. <laughs> no, no. So, so no, we, we can't fit one in, in an Idris or an Idris. There's no way. No. It's just too big. Um, and they'll already be there, so it's kind of like there'll be corporations that own those, and they'll be there on the things that you can then get when you're there. Yeah, so, those are like real high-end things. Like yeah, and you know maybe the there's bigger ships there. that transport them later. I mean, we just showed a destroyer the other day. We just showed that off to everybody, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. All right, let's get right to it. From Darklander, what does a wingman do during the week at Cloud Imperium when not starring on Wingman's Hangar? <coughs> yeah, Sorry. that's a big adjective, starring. on Starring. <laughs> What, it's what, more like showing what up. What does a wingman do? Yeah, well, um, to answer the question in all seriousness, um, meetings, meetings, and more meetings. We, we do a lot of coordination between all the studios, all the offices. My job is primarily to um, manage the Austin studio as well as check on the integration. The Austin studio is responsible for integrating all the bits and pieces into the game itself and the persistent universe. So there's a lot that's going on. We manage the teams in Austin. Uh, we work with the teams in Montreal. Uh, we, we support Chris in, in dogfighting in Los Angeles and Aaron in, in Foundry 42. So it's a lot. I mean, it's a many hour a week job that is way beyond the 40 that, uh, that, that we're supposed to work. But it's also a passion. And that's what we do. So uh, I manage the Austin studio is the short answer to a and I star. Way too late for that. I star. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. Way too late for that. Too late for that. All right. From Isonix. Back in the day, the Star Citizen PU was billed for solo players or small groups of players. With their Citizen dossier highlighting their exploits as they journeyed through the verse and potentially became famous slash infamous, infamous, has the rise of popularity in organizations changed that mindset? Hmm. That's a good question. Quick answer. Hey, we're doing short answers again. No, no, it hasn't changed that right, focus. Exactly. Um, it's it's something we've planned for all along. So we're still planning to support that whole range of you know soloists can go out there and wander around and do their thing, and small groups. So we really want to support small groups as well. And while you know they may not be able to do things as epic as the very large groups, there will still be plenty for them to do to to gain a reputation. Right. So um, you know we're we're supporting all of that. Yeah, and it, it's exactly right. If you ever played privateer or freelancer, you'll know exactly what kind of game we're designing for people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's there, if you think of it like buckets, so there'll be things to do for the big ones, there'll be things to do for the mediums, and there'll be things to do for the smalls. And, you know, I personally like to group play with people, but I also like to sometimes go out and just, you know, play by myself. <laughs> mm. Mm. Not sure I like the answer, though. <laughs> From Karu. Will Star Citizen make use of CPUs with six and eight cores? Hmm. Dave, you want to take a step? <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> let me let me break it down. Uh, <laughs> no, I have. Uh, so the, the, uh, another quick answer. Yes, and yeah. in fact, we already do. But uh, the the uh, engineering team is has plans to further support that to extend the capabilities of the engine to use it right. better. So so we'll be taking advantage. I mean, that's one of the things that Chris has always said is that we're going to be supporting those with very high-end machines because nobody's out there doing that now. And that's part of our message, our core message. So you bet your bippy will be supporting that stuff. From Loopy Dog, right now you get stuck on seats in the freelancer without a suit. 
I wouldn't want to buy a suit and not be able to get out the door. Are the airlocks on ships going to have size ratings? Well, that's a pretty good question, Rob. We just we just had the design meeting today on airlocks and, and yeah. boarding and stuff. And Dave was on a plane, so Dave yeah. missed the design Snakes meeting. Snakes on today. a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so airlocks. Um, yes, airlocks are going to be different sizes, and that means not every ship can dock with every other ship. That's the theory behind it, at least. Um, so. At the same time, we're not going to like let you buy a giant spacesuit and fit in an Aurora, so you weren't going to have trouble getting out of that airlock because you can't get into the ship in the first place. Right. So you know the armor is is also a scale thing. You have to you have to have a ship that supports that level of armor. Okay, cool. From Beltran, will our avatar actually speak during the Squadron Forty Two campaign, or even in the Persistent Universe? And if yes, are there going to be multiple packages of voice sets? Uh, I believe so. That's the, the understanding that we're sort of moving forward with. That yeah, you're going to hear your your character speak as to, as to how many variations we have. I'm not sure if that's sort of a Martin TBD. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's exactly right. And that's and again, this is one of those things that the audience will help us determine. Maybe they come up with some ideas on how many they want or what kind of things. Right. You know, they they want and there'll be different reactions in Squadron 42 to different people. They'll have multiple levels of answering questions from folks. Right. So. Maybe somehow we put that in the persistent universe. We'll see how they go. So TBD is an answer there, and I know we haven't done that in a while, but, you know. And we also have, I mean, it, we'll have voice chat and live driver, so <laughs> That's people true. can talk directly to one another. Right. Well. right. From Shrike, it has been said that we will be able to upgrade an LTI Aurora to an LTI Mustang for free once it's released. How will this be handled for Aurora LX and LN owners? Hmm. Well, the... Uh the way we're doing it right now is there's going to be a token that allows you to, to flip your LTI Aurora to a, an uh, LTI Mustang. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the more expensive variants of the Aurora, if there's a price difference, we'll give them a refund and store credit. Is, I believe that. Yeah, that's, I think that's exactly right. Um, and there might be some Mustang variants perhaps in the future? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, well, stay tuned for that, right? <laughs> and last but never least, from Andy Goodstar, can we get a horse in addition to the buggy? I mean, they had horses in Firefly, and since you'll be sharing codes and tricks with Kingdom Come, it should be quite easy. <laughs> Are we going to have horses? Piece of cake. <laughs> you know how to make an artist cry? Tell them they have to animate a horse, but see, it's already been done. Yeah. Uh, but no, we, we really think their horse technology is awesome. Yeah, it's um, very cool. But no plans for it in our game. At this point. Cool. Well, Dave, Rob, thank you very much. And now... It's on this camera. So it's time for Mike Moreland with this week's Most Valuable Post. Hi, I'm Michael Moreland, standing in again for Ben Lesnick for this week's Most Valuable Post. This week's MVP goes to Mark M for his post, How to Create Your Own Art Using RSI's Assets. Now this happened quite a long time ago when people figured out how to strip our assets out of our builds and we thought that was pretty amazing. Most developers wouldn't think that was too cool, but wow, we love what you guys are doing with it. So Markup set up a post that walked you through exactly how to get those assets out of our builds. Thanks Markup. You're our most valuable post this week. This week's fan focus is Caden Wellborn. He and a group of his friends got together and created an entire Star Citizen soundtrack. It is really, really cool. Let's take a look at listen to some of the songs. Some of my favorites on there are Delivering the Stars by Nicholas Fitzgerald. So cool. Love that stuff. Mm. Love it. We have To War by Caden Wellborn. Mm, these guys, very, very talented. Loving it. And we have Decadent by Leth River and Nick D. Wow. And it wouldn't be complete without Sunk in the Void by Yuchin Tian. And I hope I didn't butcher your name. But some of this music is fantastic. They've got about 22 tracks on there. Go in there, take a listen, download it, put it on your iPhone, iPad, whatever, you know, your Samsung. Just it's really, really cool. These guys have gone out of their way to create something very fun and exciting and engaging for the community, and it's our job to support them. Well done, fellas. We appreciate it. That's this week's Fan Focus. Wow, that was really, really cool. It takes a lot of work 
and a lot of passion, and we appreciate that. Very, very cool fan focus. So look who's here, everybody. Dave Haddock, and we talked, we saw him earlier, obviously, but you know, you're gonna be this week's guest. And so as the lead writer, we met Phil Miller last week on, on the show, and we talked a little about the mining quality and what's going on. And so as the lead writer of Squadron 42, I'll bet it's a fairly challenging project. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot to account for. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty sprawling, epic story, and then mixed into that is with all the, uh, the wingmen and the, you know, the personalities that you have to kind of manage while on board the ship. It's, it's a, a lot of variations, a lot of characters, a lot of stuff to keep track of. It's true, and, and you have to, I mean, you can have variant answers, or what happens in the story actually can change the, the direction it goes, so it's got to be like writing multiple stories at once. Yeah, it's really, it's really crazy. Uh, I had no idea. I mean, you know, you play games like Last of Us and Call of Duty and stuff like that, and it's very—it's a kind of a very linear, progressive thing. Mm -hmm. And so you think that it's a very straightforward method of storytelling, but even those, I mean, it's a really complicated media. <laughs> so it's, right, and the onus on is on us to get something done exactly right. So you're right. doing—we're doing like um, episodic adventures, right? So we're we'll releasing episodes at a time. So right. Uh, is it going to be like the old serials where you have a cliffhanger every now and then, or what's going on with that? That's the idea at this point. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I think with the serials that we've been doing on the, the the website, we've already kind of established that as our kind of fun way to tease the fans. Right. Uh, but you know, I think it's it's, and we actually just recently have been discussing like what exactly are the sort of episode breaks mm -hmm. for the entire for all the missions and stuff uh, to make them manageable and to have the stories feel contained but still building towards a larger story. Uh, but yeah, I think you, you got to end on that sort of cliffhanger, you know, dying to get the next episode to keep on pushing forward. Right, and it shouldn't be too long a wait before between episodes for people to get in there and play. And and it is kind of a prequel. It does kind of set up the big universe. And you've been writing a, most of the fiction that's on the website. So, you know, are you have any favorite characters? Do you have anybody that you really really enjoy writing the most for? Or? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, we're, actually, weirdly enough, the the one I. I surprisingly find a lot of fun to write is the Congress Now ones, where it's just the transcripts of congressmen yelling at each other. I don't know why, but for some reason that one's, it's so much fun to write. Because you just get these personalities and they're always just bickering and sniping at each other. And uh, uh, But yeah, I mean, as far as the fiction goes, I mean, I, was a, I like Kid Crimson a lot, just because right. I love that type of pulpy noir novels. Uh, and the Tanya stories I actually was, liked a lot as well, so. Yeah, everyone's got kind of their own appeal, you know. But you think we might see some of those people in the verse somewhere? I think so. I think it's a good possibility that. I mean, you know, it's basically painting a big bullseye on them, you know. Probably yeah. <laughs> hoping that they live past hour one. Of yeah, the, well, I doubt universe. that. I mean, you know, probably the, not. Yeah. <laughs> All the people with I Heart Dave Haddock, but humper stickers will protect. Them. Right, right, and so in hour two when they die. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun. So, so you do, but you do enjoy it. I mean, you've kind of been able. I mean, writing these like short stories is is kind of able to. You, you got a creative Jones going. You can literally have some fun and go all these yeah. different directions and imagine this giant universe and all these political agendas and things that are happening. And right, no, I mean that was the thing. It was it was actually a, the the best way possible to kind of start tackling the universe because I mean those were coming out. The Cal Mason and Kid Crimson were coming out during the crowdfunding. Sure, so it was like kind of being able to te stress test the universe, what we had already had, to see what needed work, what we needed to flesh out, and you know, what uh, uh, still needed to be explored. So uh, yeah, no, I mean, it was a great, great opportunity to kind of test the limits of where we wanted the universe to go. And we can see some, we'll see, be seeing some more stories from some of the characters that you've talked about, but there might be some new ones to be introduced going forward. And yeah, we have a, I mean, we're, we're, we have a new serial that's that's posting right now, and of course there's stories in the Jump Point and stuff like that. And so yeah, there's a whole slew of characters that are, you know, progressively kind of coming out to keep everyone entertained as as uh, as they wait for the game. And you know, and then the plans when the game comes out and the lore is created by some of the fans out there by themselves, we might be able to pick up some of the things that have gone on and create lore around that. You Absolutely, know, build, build yeah. Upon you know, their stories. You you you're the guy who kills Dread Pirate Roberts. You get in the Wicked, you know, the Galactopedia. Someone might write a serial about what you. What about the guy who kills Wingman? Well, it'll take five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Says my wife. You know, the point is, you know, you will be writing about, yeah, that's probably, can we cut that out? Can we redact that part? I believe we can. So, but that'll be fun, right? Writing stories based around the lore of other people. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, there was a, a 
question I was ask, answering in the Ask a Dev about the, uh, in response to the news update about the stretch goal system. And someone was asking, you know, will, will we be able to, to be part of the lore and, and, and such? And, uh, you know, the idea came out of like, it would be a lot of fun for, to write a news article uh, interviewing a backer who had discovered a system and then Ooh. release that news article to the public as a, you know, uh, New United news piece or whatever, but we're, we're getting sound bites from the player. Basically. That'd be really, really fun yeah. and cool. I think, the, and I think the backers would really like that. I think yeah. they'd, they'd, li they'd like being part of that. And I don't think that's ever been done before, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's really been that level of interactivity. Yes, of, uh, and and so and eventually we're, we, you know, as we get into this further and further, as we get the persistent universe going, we'll we'll start writing for the meta events, the large global events that are going on throughout the universe, which will be fun too. The, yeah. Who's fighting who? Where a war breaks out? What's going on in the system? Right. Are we, you know, colonization? All that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of fiction to be written. Yeah. Um, four star citizens. Well, and it's you know, there's aside from the stuff that we come up with, there's the stuff that we have to adjust to based on what the players do in the game. So right. it's like kind of two levels of we have our plans, they're going to have their plans, and we have to figure out which way the universe goes based on, you know, what people do. Now that also happens in Squadron 42 because you can take multiple paths, right? And so yes. We talked a little bit about that, but it's kind of like, um, it's got to be huge. I mean, I, you got to think of a, a normal script for linear stories, what, 110, 120 pages? 120. So what do you think this is going to end up being? I don't know. Have nightmares imagining the <laughs> stacks of paper that the script is going to be, uh, and all performance captured, and all. Yeah, you know. I mean the thing. The thing. I mean, Aaron. Aaron actually had a, a very good point about you know uh, keeping the the branching contained because uh, you know the more you branch, the 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 more dilute your story. The farther away it gets from the trunk of the story. The yeah, the story. you know you have I to make everything that. make sense and stuff. So nothing's everything starts to feel more episodic and not as make not have as much dramatic weight. So I right. think it was a it was you know. We've kind of been able to keep it contained. There's still choices, there's still consequences, but keep it focused so you know there's a real threat, there's a real villain, there's real cost and real stakes and stuff like that. So the player hopefully gets engaged by that. Cool, man. Well, thank you very much for stopping by, and sure. appreciate. It. Always good to see you. Um, yeah. You're you're in town for the mocap shoot, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, which should be really really interesting to. I've never seen one of those things live, so I'm a full performance capture. I mean, it's it's audio, it's face, it's it's body. Super it's, cool. Uh, it's incredible. I <laughs> know yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna make it look, you know, real characters with real actions interacting with each other. So yeah, I want to thank subscribers and pledgers for helping us put together this show, helping us put Wingman's Hangar. Without you guys, there obviously is no us. Um, coming up, well, later on, right after the show ends, you can push that button and get your hangar patch. If you got the Oculus Rift, put them on, play with it. Tell us what you think, how we can make it better, what you like, what you, you know, well, just keep it to what you like. No kidding. Let us know what you think, how we can make it better. All those things are important. That's, that's why we're doing this together. Um, again, we just talked with Dave here about our first mole-cap performances going on. We'll bring you up to date on that in a future Wingman's Hangar. We're going to go out and film a little bit of it, show you how that all works and what happens there. Um, ooh, this week on the next great Starship, the judges take a critical look at competitors' initial ship designs. Uh, with the mercenary gunship, we gave the specs to all 16 teams, uh, which I think we're going to show on the screen now. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Magic! Watch for episode five coming up this Friday. It's going to be really fun. Those guys, there are some insanely talented people on that. And Sandy and the, and the Chris's and Sean and Mark and the gold shirt. The gold shirt, man. It's a great mm -hmm. shirt. I know, it's a great shirt. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a word I haven't heard used describing that shirt, but I guess so. <laughs> um, you know, coming up next week on Wingman's Hangar, we're going to take a look at damage states. What's that mean? Well, you'll have to watch next week to see. Okay. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way, whenever we have something going up on YouTube, you'll the first one. You'll be the first to know. You'll find out what goes on a video with you know either Sandy and, and Next Great Starship, Wingman's Hangar, Ten for the Chairman, all the cool stuff that we got going on. You'll be one of the first to know when it's posted. Uh, submit your questions on the RSI forum. When you have questions you want answered on forum feedback or Ten for the Chairman and Subscriber Den, make sure you get them in. We put a forum feedback thread up. I believe it's on every Friday. We've kind of still getting into the new. Flow, now that we're on Wednesdays, we'll put the thread up there, you put your questions, we'll pick a few, we'll answer them, that's where we get our forum feedback. Without you, we don't have a forum feedback. And uh, 
Remember, Wingman's Hangover is 15 minutes after the show. Yeah, we'll have a little informal look. Yeah, right, informal, any more than it can be. Uh, we'll just talk together, have Skype calls. We'll get in chat roll. Get in chat, communicate, talk to each other directly. Let me know what you thought, you know, what we can do better. And, and it's, it's, it's our, your way of getting your voice heard while it's, you know, pressing it on your mind. I'm not even sure if that's actually the word I'm looking for, but it's, it's, it's a good time anyway. Um, remember, if you want your stuff featured on Wingman's Hanger, send it in. We just might use it. Where are we going to see them, guys? In, in the, the verse. verse. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is not to accept the mission. What do you do?